Good day to everyone. Our lesson for today is all about sources, identification of the historical importance of the text. Let's start. Let's watch the video about the first voyage around the world by Antonia Piquepeta. And after that, we will discuss his first voyage. Antonio Pigafetta is a famous Italian traveler born in Vicenza around 1490. Died in the same city in 1534, who is also known by the name of Antonio Lombardo or Francisco Antonio Pigafetta. He traveled with the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan and his group by order of the King Charles of Spain on their voyage to the Indies. During the expedition, he served as Magellan's assistant and kept an accurate journal which later assisted him in translating one of the Philippine languages, Cebuano. approximately 240 who set out three years ago. The voyage completed the first circumnavigation of the world. Juan Sebastián Elcano served as captain after Magellan's death. Pigafetta's journal is the source for much of what we know about Magellan and Elcano's voyage. Background of document August 10, 1519, five ships departed from Seville for what was to become the first circumnavigation of the globe. Linked by fame to the name of its captain, Magellan, much of the expedition is known through the travelogue of one of the few crew members who returned to Spain, Antonio Pigafetta. A narrative and cartographic record of the journey from Patagonia to Indonesia, from the Philippines to the Cape of Good Hope, Pigafetta's The First Voyage Around the World is a classic of discovery and exploration literature. The First Voyage Around the World is also a remarkably accurate ethnographic and geographical account of the circumnavigation and one of that has earned its reputation among modern historiographers and students of the early contacts between Europe and the East Indies. Expertly presented and handsomely illustrated, this edition of Pigafetta's classic travelogue is sure to enlighten new readers and invigorate the imagination as the story has done since it first appeared. The Livelihood They live according to the dictates of nature and reach an age of 125 years to 140 years, and they are naked, both men and women. They live in certain longhouses, which they call boy, and sleep in cotton hammocks called amaji, which are fastened in those houses by each end to large beams, a fire is built on the ground under those hammocks. In each one of those houses, there are 100 men with their wives and children, and they make a great racket. They have boats called canoes, made one of single huge tree, allowed out by the use of the stone. They employ stones as we do iron 
They paddle with blades like the shovel of a furnace and block naked and shaven. They resemble when paddling the inhabitants of the Stygian marsh. Men and women are as well proportioned as we. They eat the human flesh of their enemies not because it is good but because it is certain stab. Flora is a particular plant in region, habitat, or geological region. Palm tree's scientific name is Eraci. It grows in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Bamboo's scientific name is Bamboo Swaidi. It grows everywhere except in extremely cold countries. It is originated in China. Coconut's scientific name is Coconuciferia. It is first cultivated in island of Southeast Asia, and it is also member of palm tree. Sergo, or also known as Sergium, is a flowering plant in a grass family of Poaceae. It is from northern eastern Africa and Egyptian Sudanese border around 5,000 to 8,000 years ago. Fig leaf's scientific name is Ficus lairata, commonly known as Fiddle Leaf Fig. It is native to Western Africa from Cameroon West to Sierra Leone where it grows in lowland tropical rainforest. Fauna It is an animal in particular region, habitat, or geological period. Dorado It is a mahi-mahi or commonly known as dolphin fish. It is a surface-dwelling real fin fish and it can be found in offshore, temperate, tropical, and subtropical waters worldwide. Dog Earliest known dog-like fossils come from Europe. But, the DNA studies have implicated East Asia and the Middle East. Now, a large DNA study is saying that dogs originated in Europe some 19,000 to 32,000 years ago. Fowls is a type of bird that is used to produce meat and eggs. Fowls includes peasant or pasianidae, turkey or milagris, rooster and gallus gallus domesticus, and lastly, whale. Swine is an adult pig. It is originated in Eurasian wild boar and they process a mitochondria DNA and nuclear genes from wild and domestic pigs from Asia and Europe. Kingdom of swine is Animalia, family, today, phylum, chordata. Goats are originated from the mountainous area of West Asia and Eastern Europe. The family of goat is Bovidae, Kingdom, Animalia, phylum, chordata. Bats, scientific name is Chiroptera. Bats are mammals with their forelegs adapted as wings. They are the only mammals capable of true and sustainable flight. Bats class is Mammalia, Kingdom, Animalia, and Order Chiroptera. Shared in the Philippines, centered around the Manila Galleons, Good shield from Acapulco on the west coast of Mexico or New Spain. Good shipments of silver bullion and minted coin that were exchanged for return cargoes of Chinese goods, mainly silk tiles and porcelains. The long conquered and sought alliances among indigenous Filipinos, beginning with Datu Zula, the chieftain of Cebu, now Cebu, and took special pride in converting them to Christianity in form of Catholicism. Jalan's expedition became involved in the political rivalries between the Cebuano natives and took the part in a battle against Matulapu, chieftain of Mactan Island, and a mortal enemy, Natus. It said in the book that Filipinos have a form of government even before the civilization. The earliest political system used during the conquista period was the encomienda system which resembles the feudal system in the medieval period. The conquistadors, friars, and native nobles were granted estates in exchange for their services to the king and were given the privilege to collect tribute from its inhabitants. In return, the person granted the encomienda, known as encomendero, was tasked to provide military protection to the inhabitants, justice, and governance. The encomienda system was abused by encomenderos and by 1700s was largely replaced 
by administrative provinces, each headed by an alcalde mayor or provincial mayor. Clothing and fitting style of men and women in the past according to Adonio Pilofeta. Raja, honorary title, title captain or king. This man is powerful that makes decisions and leads his people. The Raja wore a turban and a long silky skirt, wearing earrings and many gold ornaments and gold mounted weapons. It is the sign of being a royal blood, a powerful person in a town or region. And for the local people, they used to wear bahag or a cloth that only hides their private. Being a woman in the past is for housekeeping and slaves to the Mahardikas. They are topless and wearing this long skirt called tapis. And if you were born with the royal blood, they wear dress that hides their skin, a silk cloth, and a bunch of gold accessories in their hair. Being a man in the past is a strong and a powerful person, while women are going to be a slave or a princess being a cop that cannot step outside and touch a step. was born in 1491, although no one knows the exact date of his birth. Lapu-Lapu is also known as Lapu-Lapu, Silapu-Lapu, Salipu-Laka, Kalipu-Laku, and Lapu-Lapu de Mantag. And he was a ruler of Mactan in the Visayas. When Lapu-Lapu was just 6 years of age, he could ride horseback and carry By the age of 7, he could also read and write. Two years later, by the age of 9, he became an excellent boxer. He also continued to learn other sports as well, such as swimming and wrestling. By the time he was 18, Lapu Lapu had become a champion in all of his sports. By the time he was 20, Lapu Lapu had defeated both the Borneo soldiers and pirates. During his time as a king, Many foreign countries tried to claim the island and the islands which were to become the Philippines as their own, including the famous explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Magellan was conquering the neighboring island of Spain. The explorer remembered the existence of the island and the smaller of the country. Magellan attempted to conquer the island by great troops from the Cebu soldiers. However, he was met with a great amount of resistance by the Mactan people. This resistance was headed by their leader Lapu-Lapu. The Mactan people armed themselves with native weaponry and won the battle against Magellan in order to maintain their independence. Lapu-Lapu and the Mactan killed Magellan and many others during this battle, which has become known in Philippine history as the Battle of Mactan. The Battle of Mactan April 26, 1521, Zula, a chief of the island of Matan, sent one of his sons to present two goats to the captain general and to say that he would send him all that he had promised. He had not been able to send it to him because of the other chief, Lapu-Lapu, who refused to obey the king of Spania. Zula requested Magellan to send him only one boatload of men on the next night so that they might help him and fight against the other chief, Lapu-Lapu. The captain general decided to go with three boatloads. They begged Magellan repeatedly not to go, but he is like a good shepherd, refused to abandon his flock. At midnight, 60 men set out armed with corslets and helmets together with the Christian king the prince, some of the chief men, and 20 or 30 balangais. They reached Matan three hours before dawn. The captain did not wish to fight, but he sent a message to the natives with the moral. If you would obey the king of Spania, recognize the Christian king as their sovereign, and pay us our tribute, I would be your friend. But if you wish otherwise, then you should wait to see how our lass is wounded. They replied, if you had lances, we have lances of bamboo, 
and stakes hardened with fire. They asked not to attack them at once, but wait until morning so that they might have more men. Magellan did not know they said that in order to induce them to go in search for them. They dug certain holes between the houses in order that they might fall into them. Antonio Pigafetta Point of View When morning came, 49 of us leaped into the water up to our ties and walked through water for more than two crossbow flights before we could reach the shore. The boats could not approach nearer because of certain rocks in the water. The other 11 men remained behind to guard the boats. When we reached land, those men had formed in three divisions to the number of more than 1,500 persons. When they saw us, they charged down upon us with exceeding loud cries, two divisions on our flanks and the other on our front. When the captain saw that, he formed us into two divisions and thus did we begin to fight. The musketeers and crossbowmen shot from a distance for about a half hour, but uselessly, the shots only passed through the shields, which were made of thin wood. The captain cried to them, cease firing, cease firing, but his order was not all headed when the natives were shooting our muskets to no purpose. Crying out, they determined to stand firm, but they redoubled their shots. When their muskets were discharged, the natives would never stand still but leap hither and thither, covering themselves with their shields. They shoot so many arrows at us and hurled so many bamboo spears at the Captain General. Seeing that, the Captain General sent some men to burn their houses in order to terrify them. When they saw their houses burning, they were roused to greater fury. Two of our men were killed near the houses, while we burned 20 or 30 houses. So many of them charged down upon us that they shot the captain through the right leg with a poison arrow. On that account, he ordered us to retire slowly, but the men took to flight. Six or eight of us who remained with the captain, the natives shot only at our legs, for the latter were bare, and so many were the spears and stones that they hurled at us that we could offer no resistance. The mortars in the boats could not aid us as they were too far away, so we continued to retire for more than a good crossbow flight from the shore, always fighting up to our knees in the water. The natives continued to pursue us and picking up the same spear four or six times. Recognizing the captain, so many turned upon him that they knocked his helmet off his head twice. But he always stood firmly like a good knight together with some others. Thus, did we fight for more than one hour, refusing to retire farther. An Indian hurled a bamboo spear into the captain's face, but the latter immediately killed him with his lance, which he left in the Indian's body. When the natives saw that, they all hurled themselves upon him. One of them wounded him on the left leg with a large cutlass. They rushed upon him with iron and bamboo spears. Until they killed our mirror, our light, our comfort, and our true guide. When they wounded him, he turned back many times to see whether we were all in the boats. Thereupon, beholding him dead, we, wounded, retreated as best we could to the boats which we already pulling off. Treatment of Europeans to the Filipinos in 16th century Ferdinand Magellan and his friends became the first Europeans to reach the Philippines where they were able to feast on bananas and coconuts. With Magellan's Malay slave acting as a translator, they sailed on through the Philippines to Cebu, where they made an alliance with a local ruler who agreed to be baptized a Christian and swore to the King of Spain. A local chief from the island of Mactan 
then asked Magellan for help in defeating his rival named Datu Lapulap. Ferdinand Magellan agreed that he crossed to Mactan with his 69 men in boats. Though the Europeans had superior weapons and armors, they were massively outnumbered after burning the enemy's village. Ferdinand Magellan's men were driven back into the shallow water. Magellan himself was cut down as they tried to reach the boats. Their former allies on Cebu turned on Magellan's crew butchering 50 of them in an ambush. The survivors fled with only enough men, left the crew two ships. They burned the concept and continued their search for the Spice Islands. The Conclusion Magellan and his team arrived in the island of the Philippines and riding the ship of Victoria. There are some natives giving sign of joy for the presence of the Magellan. The native Filipino did welcome the foreigner warly and they exhibit great sign of the pleasure of singing us. Magellan succeed over his plan to influence the fate of people in the island he have conquered including ours. The native Filipino have their own idols before in a god which they called Abba, but they threw this belief away as they, em they embraced Christianity which was introduced by Magellan. The first mass in our country happened on the last of March and the first cross was the setup in Mazua, which by Magellan for the benefits of the natives. Magellan and his crew went to Cebu upon hearing good report from the king of Masua. They are not evidently welcome for the sake as to pay tribute, but Magellan refused to do, so that there are drop of their blood as a sign of their friendship, and they are both agreed. The king being mentioned by Pigafetta are the Datu, which lead the island before. Therefore, the native Filipino follow a social system where there are the leaders and there are the servants. Magellan did discover our islands through a strait, which is now called Magellan Strait. But Philippines, as inhabitants, even before the Spanish came to conquer us. Okay, class, let's discuss. Mapapansin natin na doon sa ibinigay na video, doon sa inilahad ng video, ay talagang buong detalye na inilahad kung sino nga ba ang kasama ni Ferdinand Magellan sa kanyang unang paglalakbay, yung first voyage around the world. Ito ay, hindi, well, ito ay walang iba kundi si Antonio Picapeta, na isa ring Spanish. Okay, mapapansin natin pati yung may kinalaman sa ano ba yung nakita sa isla natin, ano ba yung mga natagpo ang mga halaman tulad ng bawa ng flora and fauna. Yung flora, yung mga iba't ibang mga halaman. Yung fauna naman ay maaring mga iba't ibang species ng mga isla. Magkikatulad ng bawa ng mga nakita nila na iba't ibang mga hayop tulad ng kambing, tulad ng baboy. Yan din naman ang iba't ibang mga pagkain tulad dalimbawa ng, ng buko o ng nyog, maging yung mga puno, ayan tulad ng mga kawayan, maaring iba ay mayroong iba't ibang mga bansa sa Asia o sa Europa na pinagpunan. Yung din naman yung paglalakbay ni Magella na kasama si Antonio Picapeta. On August 10, 1519, five ships departed from Seville for what was to become the first circumnavigation of the globe, linked by the fame to the name of its captain, Magellan. Much of the expedition is known through the travel of one of the new, of the few crew members who returned to Spain, Antonio Picapeta. Ibig sabihin namang na ang nagkwento o nagsalisay nito sa kanilang unang paglilakbay ay si Antonio Picapeta. 
a narrative and cartographic record of the journey, including 23 hand-drew watercolor charts from Patagonia to Indonesia, from Philippines to the Cape of Good Hope. Higapetas, the first voyage around the world, is a classic of discovery and exploration literature. Mapapansin natin na napaka-detalyado ang paglalahad o yung pagsasalisay ni Antonio Pigapeta nung matagpuan nila ang Pilipinas. Na kung saan, masabi natin na ang Pilipinas ay isa sa mga may tuturing na ista ng mga rekado at kung saan kaya nga tayo sinakop kasi mayaman tayo sa mga likas na yaman tulad na himbawa na lamang ng mga langis. Ano? Ayan. Kaya maraming mga mananakop o maraming mga manalakbay ang pwede tayong sinasakop dahil sa mga likas na yaman ng ating bansa. This volume is based on the critical edition by Antonio Canova. It includes an extensive introduction to the work and generous annotations by Tudor J. Kachi Jr., who discusses the marvelous elements of the story through allusions to Magellan travels made by writers as diverse as Shakespeare and Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Patuloy ng sinabi kanina na yung pagkakalahad ni Antonio Pigapeta dito ay maaaring mabasa rin sa critical edition ni Antonio Canova na kung saan yung pagkakasalisay nila ay napakaraming allusions. Kumaga ay parang... Uh, parang nabuo sa isip nila yung pagsasalisay or nagkaroon sila ng mga visual images sa pagsasalisay katulad ng panulat ni Shakespeare at ni Gabriel Garcia Mar Marquez. Ganun ka ganun kaganda yung kanilang pagsasalisay na gamit yung mga allusions na yun sa paglalakbay ni Magellan. However, Kaji is careful to, to point out that Pigapeta's book is far from just a marble-filled travel narrative. The first voyage around the world is also a remarkably accurate ethnographic and geographic account of the circumnavigation and one that has earned its reputation among modern historiographers and students of early contacts between Europe and East Indies. Masabi natin na talagang binigyang pansin dito yung unang paglalakbay nila sa buong mundo na kung saan ay ginamit daw yung accuracy, ethnographic and geographic account. Sabi na ethnographic, mula sa kanyang mga karanasan na namuhay siya doon sa paglalakbay na yon nakasama niya si Ferdinand Magellan, magkasama si Antonio Pigapeta, at gain din naman ay nagkaroon ng geographical account kasi inisa-isa, pinoint out yung mga lugar na kanilang napuntahan sa ang lahat ng panig ng mundo. At ito ay talagang masabi natin na ito ay may reputasyon, na ito ay, mat, ito ay makatotohanan kasi ito ay parang makabagong mga historiador o historiador at mga mag-aaral nito na kay sila yung talagang may kaalaman sa pag-aaral sa Europa at sa may East Indies. Expertly presented and handsomely illustrated, this edition of Pigapeta's Classic Travelogue is sure to enlighten new readers in inaugurate the imagination as the story has done since its first appeared. Kasi kung napakaganda yung pagsasalisay at yung hand drawing ni Pag, uh, Pigapeta sa mga nakita niyang mga halaman, mga puno, mga hayop, at yung mga magagandang likas na yaman sa Pilipinas, ay masabi nating may katotohanan ito Kasi nga, dito ay nagbukas, na, uh, nagbukas ang isipan ng mga Pilipino o ng mga mambabasa na talagang lahat ng kanilang mga napuntahang bansa, sa Asia man yan, sa Europa, o maging sa iba pang kontinente, ay talaga naman napakalinaw ng pagkakasalisay. Talagang masabi natin, napakaganda ng kanyang pagsasalisay. Ngayon naman ay panoorin natin isang video na patungkol sa customs of the Tagalogs. Kung sinabi natin customs, ito yung mga paminiwala, ito yung mga pamahii ng mga Tagalog. Mamaya isa-isahin natin, ano nga ba ang nakapalawag dito?
Welcome! In this chapter, we will be tackling the customs of the Tagalogs by Juan de Placencia. Juan de Placencia is a Spanish friar of the Franciscan order. He came to the Philippines with the first batch of Franciscan missionaries in 1577. He is also the author of the first religious book called Doctrina Christiana. He wrote the book as a product of his own judgments and observations. Being part of the events that happened, he was there to witness them at first hand. He functioned as the defender of the rights of the native Philippines. He also wrote the document because he was tasked by the King of Spain to document the traditions and customs of the colonized natives. This is because of the practice that colonizers used at the age of discovery to enhance superiority over the colonized natives and to prove their so-called duties and legacies to the world. The document was written in 1589, wherein it tackled the practice and traditions of the Tagalogs during the Spanish period. At that time, the Filipinos were governed by a chieftain called the Datu. Each population of Filipinos were called barangays, and each barangay has one Datu governing them. The people were categorized by their social standing, the Maharlikas or nobles, aliping the mamahay or commoners, and aliping sa gigiler as the slaves. The Maharlikas were the highest among the social classes. They don't pay taxes or give tributes to the Datu. They are required to help the Datu in times of war. The Maharlikas were obliged to pay 100 grams of rice to the Datu because if a new Datu occupied the lands, this will be their way of payment in exchange for their highest place in the social class. If a Maharlika married a commoner or a slave, the children will be divided. The first, third, fifth, and so on will go to the father, and the second, fourth, sixth will go to the mother and so on. The Alibing Mamamahay were the commoners. They are free, and they have their own gold and wealth. They cannot be slaves nor sold. The Alibing Sagigiler were the slaves. They serve their masters in the house and can be sold to other masters. In religion, they believed in their so-called badhala, in which they call as the all-powerful and maker of all things. But they also believe in the heavenly bodies such as the sun, moon, stars, etc. In burials, when a member of the barangay dies, if it's a datu, they will bury him under a porch and will be mourned for four days. If a warrior dies, a living slave will be tied underneath his body. If a commoner dies, they will be buried beside their houses. All of these events will be accompanied by drinking and eating. They also believe in the concept of afterlife, which they called Maka. They also believe in witches, such as Hokloban, Mangkokolam, and Mangangaway. At this time, the main event that affected the Philippines was the Spanish colonization, which influenced us with some of their customs, such as Christianity and the formation of a government. The Philippines was portrayed as a community without a unified government. Each barangay was governed by a datu. Their religion was not just focused on one god alone, or their bathala, but they believed in the existence of heavenly bodies as well. This made them pagan or animists. Here are some terms and concepts with their meanings that the natives used at this time.
There has some been confusion between aliping na mamahay and aliping sa gigilid. In some books, both were classified as slaves. But in Placentia's book, aliping mamamahay was known as the commoners of the barangay. The aliping sa gigilid were regarded as the slaves. This text is credible and relevant because Placentia himself was there to witness the events and customs that he wrote in this document. This document served as a basis of how the Filipino people were before. Okay, class, naririnig na natin yung One de Placentia Customs of the Tagalogs. Na kung saan binanggit dito na si Juan de Placentia, siya yung sumulat o author ng doktrina Kristiyana. At dito ay sinuri niya ang Pilipinas, sinuri niya ang mga Pilipino, lalong-lalo na sa kanilang asal, ugali, lalong-lalo na sa kanilang mga paniniwala, kanilang customs or kanilang tradisyon. Kimasabi natin na si Juan de Placentia ay nagkaroon ng maayos na tala tungkol sa tradisyon ng mga Pilipino o ng mga Tagalog. Marami siyang mga binigay ng mga definisyon. Tulad na himbawa ng datu, ang pinakamataas, chiptain na mumuno sa isang barangay o balangay. Tapos yung maharlika, yung mga noble, sila yung mga mayayaman. Sila yung pinakamataas na uri sa lipunan pagkatapos ng datu. At yung dalawang uri ng aliping. Aliping na mamahay, commoners, at yung aliping sa gigili. Sila yung nakatira sa bahay na pwedeng ipagbili ng kanilang amo. Samantalang yung aliping na mamahay, na mamahay sila pero aliping sila pero commoners sila. Ibig sabihin mas mataas sila ng level kaysa sa aliping sa gigilid. Pinanggit din dito yung customs of and traditions tulad na limbawa ng paniniwala sa mga mangkukulam, sa mga mga ngaway. At binanggit din dito yung mga katawagan natin tulad ng bathala, yung paniniwala at yung pag, uh, pagkakaroon ng Diyos. Ano, yung ang tinuturing na Diyos ay ang mga buwan, araw, puno, bato at iba pa. Kasi ang mga Pilipino noon ay mga pagan mga pagano wala sila uh, wala silang itinuturing na relihiyon binanggit din dito yung paniniwala nila sa mga aswang sa mga tikbalang ayan ibig sabihin mayaman tayo sa kwentong bayan o folklore ayon sa pagtatala sa mga naisulat ni Juan de Placencia doon sa Customs of the Tagalogs Okay, the author Juan de Placencia was, in the first place, not a native Tagalog but a Franciscan missionary. Who first arrived in the Philippines in 1577, he was tasked by the King of Spain to document the customs and traditions of the colonized natives based on, arguably, his own observations and judgments. Tulad ng binanggit kanina, si Juan de Placencia, isang missionary praile na Franciscano, na inatasan ng hari ng Spanya para idokumento yung customs and traditions ng mga Pilipino o ng mga natives o yung ating mga katutubo. According to the accounts of Father Juan de Placencia, the early Filipinos adored the stars, although they did not know them by their names, as the Spaniards and the other nations know the planets with one exception of the morning star, which they call Tala. Ayan, binabanggit kanina na yung Tala, yung pinaniniwalaan ng mga Pilipino, diba? yung Tala ay tinitignan ng mga Pilipino, pero hindi naman nila alam kung ano yung tawag sa iba't ibang mga Tala na nasa langit. Customs of the Tagalogs. Just like any other colonial text written during the Spanish colonial period, was intentionally made to provide 
an exoticized description of the Tagalog natives, clearly fed by politics and propaganda and operated with the Western outsiders' case that would be appealing to them. Okay, masabi natin na talagang ang, ang mga paniniwala, ang mga traditions ng Tagalog ay nangyari bago pa man dumating ang mga Spanish colonizer. Pero sa paniniwala ng mga Tagalog, meron silang mga iba't ibang pinaniniwalaan. Tulad na limbawa, nasabi ko kanina, wala silang, wala silang uh, relihiyon. Uh, pin- ang kanilang ginodyos ay mga araw, buwan, bato, punong kahoy, at iba pa. At dahil nga wala silang relihiyon, pagano sila, madali sila talagang napapayag ng mga praile, ng mga kastila, na magpakonvert o lumipat sa Christianismo or sa Catholicism. Ngayon naman ay panoorin natin ang kartilya ng katimu- katipunan ni Emilio Jacinto. Alamin natin kung bakit nga ba ang kartilya ng katipunan ang namuno ay si Emilio Jacinto. Siyempre alam naman natin ang pinuno ng KKK ay si Andres Bonifacio. Siya yung sumulat. Si Emilio Jacinto ang sumulat ng kartilya ng katipunan bilang, uh, pag, bilang kanyang uh, pagkakaroon ng uh, pagkakaroon ng pagtulong sa ating katipunan sa pamumuno ni Andres Bonifacio. Panarin natin yung video. si Emilio Jacinto. Siya ay ipinanganak sa Maynila at nakakapagsalita din ng wikang Espanyol. Siya ay nag-aral sa paaralan ng San Juan de Letran, ngunit kalaunan lumipat din sa Universidad ng Santo Tomas para mag-aral ng abogasya. Kanyang naging mga klase ay sina Sergio Osmeña, Manuel L. Quezon, at Juan Sumulong. Sa kasamaang palad, hindi nakapagtapos ng kolehiyo si Emilio Asinto at nang siya'y 19 na, siya ay sumali sa sekretong samahan na tinawag bilang katipunan. Si Asinto ay naging tagapayo at sekretarya ni Andres Bonifacio na kalaunan kanilang kinaibigan ni Bonifacio si Apolinario Mabini sa kanilang kagustuhang maituloy ang Laliga Filipina ni Jose Rizal. 
Nagsulat din para sa katipunan si Yacinto at kanyang isinulat ang dyaryong pinawag na kalayaan. Nang kanyang isinulat ito, kanyang ginamit ang pangalang Dimasilaw. Siya rin ay tinawag na alias pinkian sa katipunan. Siya din ang sumulat ng kartilya ng katipunan. Karagdagan information. Katipunan, in English, is association or assembly. It comes from the root word people. It means gathering. Ang kartilya ng katipunan ay ginamit bilang isang gabay na libro kung saan ginagamit ito ng mga bago membro sa isang organisasyon. Ang organisasyon ay ginamit ito o nagbigay sila ng isang pakaharad at prinsipyo para gamitin ang mga bago membro sa isang organisasyon ito. Ang pinakaunang version ng kartilya ng katipunan ay sinulat ni Andres Bonifacio, binago lamang ni Emilio Asinto. Ang kartilya ay nagsimula sa sentang kartilya na kung saan nangangahulugang primary para sa mga estudyante. Ang kartilya ay naglalaman ng nabintatlong pangangaral kung saan dapat sundin ito ng mga bagong membro sa isang organisasyon. Ang dokumentong ito ay sinulat para sa mga sumumpang susundin ang pangangaral ng naturing organisasyon. Si Andres Bonifacio ang pinakaurihinan na gumawa ng pataharal. Ngunit hindi niya ito pinakalat dahil sa nasabing binasa niya ang version na ginawa ni Emilio Jacinto. Dahil sa nagustuhan niya ito, ginawa na niya itong opisyal. Nagawa ang kapilya ng katipunan sa isang pagpupulong na naganap noong Disyembre 1895. Sa panahon ito, lalong lumakas ang pagnanay sa mga katipuneros na makalaya sa mga Espanyol. ay tayo ay nabubuhay upang tulungan ang bawat isa. At ikalawang aral naman na matututunan ay ang paggawa ng tama na naghihingi ng kapalit at pagkilala ay hindi maaaring tuloy na kabutihan. Sa ikatlong aral naman, matututunan na ang tunay na kabanalan ay ang pagtulong at pagmamahal sa kapwa na hindi nanghihingi ng kapalit. Sa ikaapat na aral naman, matututunan na hindi nasusukat sa kulay ng balat ng isang tao pagkataon ito dahil lahat Kartilya, 
Ito ay nagsisilbing gabay sa mga informasyon patungkol sa mga miyembro na kanilang organisasyon na KKK. To institutionalize good governance among government officials. To teach honor, dignity, and curtail corruptions among politicians. To inculcate generosity and compassion among us. To practice respect for women and love for family. Scholars, historians, and analysts can benefit from the document as it showcases some of what happened before and its probable reason why do people from the Philippines act like this. Okay, class, ayan, na, nakita natin at narinig, nasaksihan natin kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng kartilya ng katipunan. Diba, pag sinabi natin kartilya ng katipunan, ito ay may kinalaman sa isang aklat o sa isang libro na magiging gabay ng mga bagong mga miyembro ng KKK. Kung sinasabi dito na dapat ay si Emilio Jacinto ang utak ng Himagsikan. 'Di ba? Naging si Andres, uh, naging si Apolinario Mabini na ang naging utak ng Himagsikan, siya raw ang naging utak ng rebolusyon. The Cartilla ng Katipunan, English Primer of the Katipunan, served as the guidebook for new members of the organization which laid out the group's rules and, and principles. The first edition of the Cartilla was written by Emilio Jacinto. Patuloy ng sinabi ko kanina, ang Cartilla ng Katipunan ay isang aklat o isang guidebook para magkaroon ng gabay ang bagong miyembro ng organisasyon o ng KKK. Andres Manipasio later wrote a revised deca Decalogue. The Decalogue originally titled Katong Kulang Gagawin ng Mga Z. Libby Duties of the Sons of the People was never published because Manipasio believed that Jacinto's Cartilla was superior, was superior to what he, made, he had made. Ibig sabihin, si Andres Manipasio meron siyang sinulat na Decalogue. Yung dekalog na to, ito yung katungkulang gagawin ng mga Z, Lee at B, Duties of the Sons of the People. Pero hindi siya na-publish kasi naniniwala si Andres Bonifacio na mas superior o mas merong uh, kaalamang matututuhan sa kartilya ng katipunan ni Emilio Jacinto. That is enough. So, Bonifacio, after the shocking news of Rizal, exalted the people. Insurrection, the pillar root in La Solidaridad, is the last remedy, especially when the people have acquired the belief that peaceful means to secure the remedies for evils prove futile or futile. Their goal was transformed from assimilation to separation and then independence. Sa, nagugulat, sa nagulat na balita o sa nakakagulat na balita ni Bonifacio na si Rizal ay pinatapon sa dalpitan kasi isa raw siyang insurrection. Sinulat ni Marcelo H. Del Pilar sa La Solidaridad. Ibig sabihin na pabalita yung pagkakatapon ni Rizal sa dalpitan, ito ay naisulat ni Marcelo H. Del Pilar sa La Solidaridad. At dahil nga dito, Naniniwala si Andres Bonifacio na wala namang kasalanan si Sarisal at hindi siya may tuturing na insertion. Nang sa ganun ay uh, umisip si Andres Bonifacio kung ano yung may tutulong kay Rizal para siya ay makatakas sa dapitan. Founding of the Katipunan or KKK Founded on the night of July 7, 1892, Ascaraga Street, Claro M. Recto Street now, kataas-taas ang kagalagalangang katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan, supreme and most honorable society of the children of the nation, suprema e venerable Associ association 
de los hijos de pueblo, founder Andres Guanipacio, with the aid of his friends, Chudora Plata, Ladislao Diwa, Jotato Arellano, Valentin Diaz. Yan, ang katipunan ay ito ay nasimulan or ito ay naitatag noong July 7, 1892 sa Ascaraga Street na ngayon ay kinala sa Claro M. Recto Street. Ang katipunan ay katastaasang pagalagalangang katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan. Siyempre, ito ay sa pamumuno ng pagkakatatag nito ni Andres Bonifacio. The aims of the katipunan, political separation from Spain, moral, good morals, good hygiene, civic, sal, uh, sick health, and defense of the poor and the oppressed, to unite the Filipinos into one solid nation, to fight for Philippine independence from Spain, the Katipunan prepared the country for an armed, for an armed revolution to regain the country's lost freedom. Ang pinakalayunin ng Katipunan sa pagkakatatag nito ay para tayo ay makalaya at para tayo ay makahiwalay sa pananakop ng mga Espanya or ng, ng Spain. At sa moral naman ay magkaroon tayo ng high morals, syempre at magkaroon din tayo ng good hygiene yung pangangalaga sa ating sarili. Sa civic naman or sa civic ko, ito ay makatulong na madepensahan natin ang mga mahihirap at mga naati. To unite the peoples in the one solid nation para magkaroon tayo ng pambansang pagkakaisa at kapayapaan. At syempre, to fight for Philippine independence from Spain para maipaglaban natin ang kalayaan natin, ang ating kalayaan sa Espanya. Sangguniang Hukuman or Judicial Council, it decided cases involving treasury among the members and quarrels between them. Sangguniang Balangay Municipal Council for every town. Sangguniang Bayan Provincial Council for every province. Kataas-taasang Sangguniang Supreme Council for the whole country. Consisted of a president, a fiscal, a secretary, a treasurer, and a comptroller. Yan ang bumubuo sa sangguniang hukuman or judicial council. Mula sa municipal council, provincial council, supreme council. Secret initiation of the katipunan. A candidate for membership was paired blindfolded and entered a secret room. In the room, there was a table with a lamp, a skull, and a bolo. The blindfold was removed from his eyes. He was given a test on the history of the Philippines to show that he knew the, Span the Spaniards had oppressed the Filipinos. He had to pass other tests on his patriotism, courage, and sincerity. Para sa mga miyembro o sa mga bagong miyembro ng katipunan, kailangan nakablindfold sila at sila papasok sa isang lihim na silid at meron doong isang mesa na kung saan ay may bungo at may ita. At pagkatapos nilang pumasok ay dapat ay maipasa nila ang history o yung mga uh, maipasa nila yung kasaysayan na patungkol sa Pilipinas para malaman na napakataas ng kanilang kaalaman lalong-lalo na sa pagiging makabayan yung kanilang patriotism, yung kanilang katapangan at yung kanilang pagiging matapat o sensoridad. Katipunan membership. Originally, the KKK recruited new members by means of triangle, triangle system. An original member would recruit two new members who did not know each other. Example, Bonifacio formed the first triangle with Diwa and Plata. They also agreed that they would pay a membership fee amounting to one real fuerte, 25 centavos, and a monthly due of media real or 12 centavos. Para sa magiging membro ng katipunan, ito ay triangle system. Kung ikaw ay gustong maging membro, dapat ay merong kang maipasok na bagong dalawang membro. Yan. Ang halimbawa nito yung uh, ginawa ni Andres Manipasyo na pinasok niya sa kanyang first triangle, si Diwa at si Plata. Siyempre, magbabayad sila 
ng membership fee na 25 centavos at syempre sa monthly due na 12 centavos. Membership in the Katipunan. Third grade, Bayani Patriot. They, they wore red masks. Their password was Rizal. Second grade, Kawal Soldier. They wore green masks. Their, pass, uh, their passwords was Gumbursa. First grade, Katipon Associate. They wore black masks. Their password was Anak ng Bayan, Sons of the People. Ayan, ito yung kanilang membership sa Katipunan. Kapag third grade ka, Bayani ka, Patriot ka. Magsusot ka ng kulang mas at ang password mo ay Rizal. Sa second grade naman, ang tawag sa kanila ay Kawal o Soldier. Sila ay nakasuot ng uh, berdeng mas at ang kanilang password ay Gumbursa. At yung sa first grade, sila ay mga tinatawag na Katipon or Associate. Sila ay nakasuot ng itim na mas at ang kanilang password ay Anak ng Bayan or Sons of the People. For your individual activity or individual output, first, write a reflection according to Antonio Pigapeta, First Voyage Around the World. One, the Presencia Customs of the Tagalogs and Emilio Jacinto, Cartilla ng Katipunan. Second, what are the historical importance of the text? Hanggang dito na lang ang ating klase. Hanggang sa muli, paalam. God bless and keep safe. 